Coming up on the program today, we're going to talk about tomatoes and how to keep them healthy all summer long. And we're going to talk about bees, why they're beneficial to the garden, and why their decline is not good. And we're also going to have a guest, Eric Knutson. He is from Root Simple. Him and his wife have written a couple of really great books all about simple urban homesteading. Plus your garden questions. And it all starts now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, wherever you're listening to. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on the program, whether you're in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, and in California, or anywhere in between via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, or through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com under the radio tab, podcast replay, or the in-studio video replay. Thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. You can find all of our content at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com where there are over 1,400 garden videos as well as access to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other social media platforms. The videos are short and long format length as well as in-studio video of this uh, program and every program that we've done here on the radio. There's a, the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable to Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at Power Planter. Dot com. You can get a little hold of us and they, uh, in a variety of different ways, and they all revolve around the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard hotline. Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shield pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For information, you can visit Ivy Organics. Dot com. Also send us an email through the IV Organics 31 Plant Guard hotline. The email address is twvgshow at gmail.com. You can also send us a text on the Instant Access IV Organics 31 Plant Guard Instant Access text hotline. You can text us at 414-368-9311. Again, that number is 414-368-9311. There's a number of people, or many people, if not uh, 99% of the people who garden, who enjoy tomatoes. There are several who do not and uh, choose not to grow them for a variety of different reasons. For the rest of us, uh, most of our tomatoes are in the ground or doing somewhat decent. Uh, We're going to go over several ways in which we can keep our tomatoes healthy and happy all season long and producing all season long. Correct. So one thing you want to do, and this is kind of Joey's task in the garden, is to trim around the base of the tomato plants. A lot of the problems your plants are going to have in the garden tomatoes or other plants is because of soil splashing up onto those lower leaves. 90% of the problems your pl- your tomato plant and all your vegetables are going to face disease-wise is from that soil splashing up. So we want it on tomatoes, we're going to want to trim the bottom six to eight inches. We'll also, uh, the important portion of this to reduce the amount of splash up on the plant is to... It's to mulch. So you can mulch around the base of your plants, you can mulch your whole entire garden. We, we mulch our whole... Garden. What What is good mulch that we can use? So you can use, if you still have leaves uh, from fall, somehow miraculously, then you can use those. You can use straw. You can use pine needles, and pine needles will not make your soil acidic. That's a myth. They, they do take a while to break down, mm-hmm. so if you're going to work them in the soil at the end of the year, keep in mind that there will be some uh, large particles that are in the soil, but it won't affect anything as the compostable process uh, takes on uh, over the winter and next spring. Right. So the pine needles, you can use weed seed, weed seed, weed free, free yeah. weed free, <laughs> and chemical free dry grass clippings. So if you or someone else comes and sprays some stuff on your lawn, don't use those grass clippings. If you don't spray on your lawn, use those grass clippings. Make sure you let them dry first because they can mold and get disgusting so you can use that and then you could also use shredded paper yeah we've used shredded paper cardboard uh shredded paper in a number of our applications it works very well uh you can find that on our social media platforms that looks a little it looks a little different but it's amazing uh we use we've got onions planted in our two foot by four foot by 12 inch high 
root maker grow, uh, raised bed. And it's elevated, and it's in a very hot portion of the garden. And traditionally, that bed gets very, very qui- uh, dry very, very quickly because of the evaporation, because we've got good compost in there. But with the application of shredded paper on top of that bed around the, the onions, the, the soil is very, very moist underneath. I was looking at it yesterday, and it's amazing how much moisture is retained by just a few uh, small layers of shredded paper on that raised bed from Rootmaker. Right. Um, so that's one is definitely mulching. But prior to the mulching, let's talk about the application of a, a product in which can reduce uh, early blight that all of our soil has in it. Okay, so this magical product, this is... A lot of people think this is weird, but you use whole grain yellow cornmeal and you put it on the base of your plants. At the time of planting, you can do it right now, midway through the season. Um, so you want to do it like right now if you haven't done it and then, I don't know, mid, mid to end of July. Halfway through your growing Halfway season. Halfway through your growing season if you're in the upper Midwest. Um, and what this does is it helps prevent that early blight. There's a lot of things in your soil. Early blight is one of them. And this has a beneficial fungi called trichoderma. And it helps combat that early blight. So, again, it's whole grain yellow cornmeal. So not the El Cheapo stuff. You bought on sale. <laughs> you bought on sale. Not the, not the blue box. You want to get the um, name brand name brand whole, whole grain, grain yeah. yellow cornmeal. And it's a very unique. If you've got mulch down already, you can pull a little bit of that mulch away, sprinkle it around the base of your growing existing tomato plants right now. Uh, and then put that mulch back on. You can water it. It's not going to affect the properties in which the whole grain cornmeal uh, uh, utilizes or, or fights against that early blight. Uh, and, you, and, again, you might think that's a silly application. Uh, we've been doing this particular practice for four and a half, five, five years now, and uh, we always get several people a year come up to us and go, I thought it was crazy, but I used it, and it was the best tomato crop I ever did have. Uh, since we've been using that particular method, uh, the end of the season, the tomato plants are as green and lush as they were in June and July because the early blight hasn't progressively worked up the plant and killed the leaves, and then you have a dead plant with a bunch of fruit hanging off of it. The uh, And that is in combination with the mulch and the trimming of the lower leaves. All three of those, the whole grain cornmeal, the, the mulch, and then consistently trimming the bottom of the leaves will greatly increase the health and the, the longevity of your tomato plant, no matter where you're at in the country or the world. A healthy tomato plant can focus on fruit production rather than uh, sustainable, sustaining life and fighting off diseases and other problems that it may have on the plant. So that goes along with watering consistently. If you water your plants consistently, then they will be healthy and happy, <clears throat> excuse me, and a whole lot of less problems. They will have the nutrient and the moisture that is required in order to grow correctly. Just like you trying to go through the whole day or two days or four days without any moisture whatsoever, you're going to be a very unhappy and maybe a dead person. Uh, the plants can uh, have that same type of uh, life as well if you do not water consistency. In addition to water consistency, keeping that soil moist at the root zone in a, in a damp sponge consistency allows the plant to pick up all the nutrient minerals and micro minerals and micro uh, macro minerals that it needs in order to properly develop the fruit. Right. Uh, so such as uh, calcium, which is a big yes. problem. So calcium, if you ever get blossom end rot, you know you have blossom end rot. Because you'll go look at your, you go to harvest your tomato, you look at the blossom end or the bottom end of it, and it's like brownish, blackish, rotted, not good. So this is because you, your the calcium is locked up in your soil, your plants don't have access to it. So watering consistently will allow the calcium to flow freely into your tomato plant. In addition to the other macro and mac, uh, micro and macro uh, nutrients. nutrient that, that the plant is in need of. So you also want to trellis or cage your tomatoes. You want to get them off the ground. This is going to improve your production greatly. Bugs aren't going to be able to get to them. 50%, 50% increase. Yep, increase. So whether you do something like a Florida weave, whether you just buy well, cages. What is a Florida weave for a those? A Florida things? weave is where you take two end posts on either side of every tomato row. and you Stab- take Stabilization, foundational posts that you nail on the ground or stake. Right. And... and well, yeah, and then you put strings. Then you put strings about uh, once every foot or so, and then you do. We do two strings next to each other, 
and then that way the tomatoes will grow up. You kind of open the strings up, assist the tomatoes, and then they'll grow up into the strings. When you look at this in the garden, it looks similar to a boxing ring, the side of it where you have the ropes, and as the tomato grows, you will gently weave it between those strings, and then that will... The weight of the strings will support the tomato. You can get a lot more tomatoes in a small area. In addition, you don't have to buy tomato cages. So it will increase your uh, production by 50% because we tried this by just not trellising them at all, not caging them. And they were on the ground. By the time they were ripe, they... They had a lot of stuff that was eaten by slugs and... They were just rotten. All sorts of stuff and rotten. So, yeah. You want to harvest your tomatoes frequently. So uh, plants are... Their plants, I guess if they have a thought process, the plant thought process is to reproduce. I don't care if nobody's eating me. I need to produce right. seeds for the next generation. That's all they care about. So if you harvest frequently, they're going to continue to put on more fruit for you. Um, and this goes with any plant, really, but definitely with tomatoes. Tomatoes, and beans, beans, cucumbers. Yes, zucchini. Zucchini. All of that is going to continue to put out more fruits for you so that you have a good harvest. And uh, we want to consistently look for problems. You just cannot put your tomato plant in the ground and then go back 90 days and go, up. Oh, time to harvest tomatoes. You have to keep looking for the problems and be uh, aware of what's going on. It's, it, this is not just a one and done, come back in a little bit and we'll harvest. So there's many, many problems, and we've covered them on the program here to where um, there is disease problems, nutrient deficiencies. It, there's a lot of things, so you need to be aware of what your tomato plant and other plants in which you're growing can uh, acquire on your tomato uh, plant. There's also leaf discoloration. Um, so if you have a plant that looks yellowing leaves, curling leaves, purpling leaves, these could all be signs of lack of nutrients in your soil, possible chemical drift. Um, there's lots of charts online that will kind of show you if a leaf looks like this, what the issue is. Yes, and you can always get a soil test uh, done from Soil Savvy. Um, they have, uh, you can go to the website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, under the radio tab, find their link and make it easy on you. You can get 10%, per- 10% discount when you use the coupon code at, the, at checkout, and it will give you a 14-point analyzation of what is in your soil, deficiency and surplus, and how you can adjust that and get it to a happy state for your tomato plants. So that is just some of, of the ways in which you can get your tomato plants healthy, keep them healthy all summer long. When we come back, it is all about bees and getting uh, understanding bees and the value that bees have. You'll be amazed at some of the stats that we have about the famous or not so famous now bumblebee. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Twenty four seven three sixty five. 365 com has all the gardening information you need. Videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash patients. Feed your garden all season long with the Hydro Feed Fertilizer Injector by Chapin. Hydro Feed Injector can be filled with water soluble fertilizer and connected to a garden hose or irrigation system, whether drip, sprinkler, or soaker hose. Fertilizer is drawn into the water system at a consistent ratio to feed and water your garden at the same time. Three models are available for gardens of different sizes. Find Hydro Feed at the Home Depot, Ace Hardware, or www.chapinmfg.com. 
Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy, homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Want a greener lawn? This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products, from plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. Cut your grass 2 to 3 inches in height. This allows the grass to be greener. And it can adapt to less water if not scheduled. It can also be more dense and it will choke out unwanted weeds. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Drip Garden is a self-watering, self-fertilizing, pop-up vertical garden with automatic timer. Easy to use, durable, grow 36 plants in a 4 foot by 4 foot area. DripGarden.com Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. It's Doug Oster from Everybody Gardens in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and you're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, and all your dreams will come true. Not really, but you'll learn to garden. Well, one dream that can come true is using an organic product that your plants and your soil will enjoy, and that's from Dr. Earth. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge, natural, organic, garden-friendly products. Based on research and innovation, after 28 years, they're the leader, the leader in organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids, composted household waste, or synthetic chemicals. And so they have manure-free fertilizer, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizers. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family, that is the founding principle of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information and where to buy. And they are... To sell bee friendly products. Bee friendly products, yes. Yeah, so we gotta, we're gonna talk about our bee friends. Bee, bees uh, are a very unique species and have a tremendous amounts of benefits to the garden and human life in general. So bees, the, I guess the most important thing bees do in this sense is they help pollinate and they, they are uh, the majority of the pollinators. So butterflies, some beetles, Bats all help pollinate too, but bees—that's like their—that's their jam. That's their main thing. Um, so it is estimated that one third of the food that we consume each day relies on pollination, mainly by bees. So um, a lot of them includes things like berries, apples, 
squash, a lot of the um, the flowering fruits, tomatoes, would tomatoes need assistance by bees. So one third of that is what is used is pollinated by bees. So if you think about it, if the bees are declining, we're going to lose one third of our food. Yes, people could hand pollinate, but you have to understand the tremendous impact that bees have on a 50 or 80 or 100 acre field with tens of thousands of plants. There's just no mechanism in which man can go in there and hand pollinate. And if one did choose to go that route, your zucchini or your squash would be at a price that you would choose not to purchase it because of the high uh, cost it was to manually get that to pollinate and produce. So there's 4,000 species of bees in North America. There's 20,000 throughout the world. Now, bees are not native to North America. The settlers brought them over. So if you think about that, if you think about what we've learned about different food things... um, There there are some species that are native to North America, but the general population... Of the bees, but if you, if you tradi- think about yeah. that, there was corn and well, well corn was is ma- is uh, maize, mice, mice, mice my, well, yeah, yeah. Anyway, corn was a grass, and over the generations of decades, it has been pollinated and created into what we currently know Pro- as crossbred, crossbred as into what we currently know as corn today. It was just but a bees, giant grass. But bees don't help pollinate corn. Is the point is that. Um, there may have been a lot of corn or whatever there was at the time, but now um, we've we have a a larger access to different foods because of bees. Right, and bees not necessarily take the pollen from the corn tassel and pollinate the hairs mm-hmm. on the ear of the corn, which in turn represents each kernel of the corn. But bees do agitate the top portions of that plant and allow some of that pollen to fall down onto the hairs to pollinate the ears. So not directly but indirectly they do help to a certain degree in addition to the wind on corn right. but i wanted to make that clear there so go ahead yeah. so i just want to mention um bumblebees are they they are the most important pollinators of blueberries cranberries and clover and they're the only insect pollinators of tomatoes so what uh tomatoes are typically pollinated by vibration of wind but also bees and insects do help uh, but they're the only agita- insect that, that choose if yes. one would well, yes. that agitates because the so they're not the only pollinator, but they're the only well, I guess unless you include us if we yeah. were to shake the tomatoes because in the tomato yeah. flower, the male and female reproductive systems are there, and by agitating the bee agitating it, it can uh, drop the pollen into and pollinate and f- uh, create the tomato. So uh, the reason why we're losing bees is because. We are using too many insecticides and pesticides, and that's very harmful to them. There's something called neonicotinoid um, pesticides, and that's what's harmful to the bees. So that includes things like glyphosate, which is in Roundup, um, and then weed and feed, and et cetera. And depends on who you talk to and what. If you're on the pro-bee side or you're on the pro-chemical side, depends on how that answer is uh, derived. Uh, oh, it doesn't affect the bees. Yes, it does. So... Science, right. so, some, uh, the science has been proving more towards the neonicotinoids affecting the hives and of I the bees. And I think we've we've moved on from dandelions for the year, but dandelions are are the first food for bees. So if you get dandelions and a lot of them, and they bother you, um, just think about how it's feeding the bees or help, like you know, helping the bees. Yeah, if you're if you're spraying chemicals on the bees, the bees are getting that on their their bodies and taking it back to the hive and, and can disrupt the natural uh, poly- natural progression of the hive as if it was if humans were not involved in that whole thing. Back to the bees pollinating clover um, or buckwheat or anything like that. If you've never had pure clover honey or pure buckwheat honey, you are missing out on the one, the benefits and the properties in which it has on your body. We're not doctors, but we've talked to individuals who have shown us the what it can do to the body, but also the taste is not like traditional store-bought honey. Some of the store-bought honey is not real, real honey. It has been altered to make you think it's real honey. You have to read the label and find out if honey is real honey or if there is some additives in which uh, the honey has in it that uh, is fake and they're selling it on a mass production so you think you're getting what you're not getting. One thing to make mention is bees are facing extinction. Depending on what study you read, who you talk to, they could be on the endangered list or they're at least really close to it. Um, and this is because it's just 
because of the things like the pesticides and chemicals. The researchers found that American bumblebees area of occurrence has decreased by about 70%. So this is big loss of habitat because we're converting prairie land into farmland and then also because of pesticides. But um, the decrease was 70% and, and it fell by 89% from 2007 to 2016 compared to 1907 to 2006. So in nine years, the, the decrease was higher than the decrease in 100 years. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Uh, more damage was done in nine years than in the previous uh, nine uh, previous hundred and one years uh, because of the but and, and many people will lead toward to the conclusion because of what humans have been doing uh, to their habitat to with chemical uh, in, in inventions uh, after World War II and uh, the the list can go on and on and on. So. Uh, bumblebees, what can we do in order to help the bumblebees in our little backyard or, or the bees in general? So you can, you can plant bee-friendly flowers. There's definitely bee-friendly mixes. You can find a bee-friendly mix at migardener.com. And then um, they have a bunch of amazing seeds for 99 cents. Another thing is you can buy little mason bee houses, and that will help the bees, and they're usually about 10 bucks or so. Now, mason bee houses, they lay their larva in there, and then the parent bee dies, and that larva lives or, well, develops over the winter, and then it emerges in the spring, and the cycle continues to continue. Right. That's different than the traditional bumblebee or the honeybee that uh, you can have a hive for. A hive, right. uh, but a hive based on your municipality and the city, you might have to have, go through a course or a class. But a mason bee house, you can it, easily anybody, obtain. It, it's good for anybody. It's good for anybody. Yes. It's not, it's not complicated. So there's that. Um, and then just in general, do not spray your lawn. Yeah, chemical, uh, introducing chemicals into your environment uh, re- uh, is one of the want things that uh, can greatly decrease the um, the death in which the bees have and increase their populace of them in your yard. And if you create a bee happy habitat, you're going to bring those into your area and maybe protect them from what your neighbors or other parts of your city are doing. Being bee friendly and insect friendly is the way to go, and Phylum Bioproducts has that. Yeah, now that the weather is starting to warm up, Finally, you want to protect your garden from various beetles, weevils, and borers, including Japanese beetles. And what better way to prevent those pests from destroying your garden than by controlling them while they are larva? GrubGone is an easy-to-apply granular product that can be spread on your turf to successfully control grub invaders. Developed by Phylum Bioproducts from a naturally occurring bacteria, GrubGone is a non-chemical BT product that specifically targets only certain scarab pests, and it is safe to use around bees and other beneficial insects. Yeah, that's right. So if you already have beetles flying around your yard, Beetle Gone is an organic dispersible powder that can be sprayed directly on your edible plants. You can find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. Coming up next, we've got the author of The Urban Homestead, Eric Newt, uh, will be with us. Got a question? Email the show at twbgshow at gmail.com. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter earth auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root-to-soil contact, to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand-welded and made in the USA, lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, emailed with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at ShieldAndSeal.com. It's never too late to start a garden. 
And with containers, you can do that virtually anywhere with the versatility they provide. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Several guidelines in which to follow when container gardening is, one, to have a container of adequate size for the crop you're intending to grow, and to make sure that there are proper drainage holes in that container. A container can be anything from a root maker grow bag to a rubber made container to a five gallon bucket, again with proper drainage holes in it. The more soil you have in that container, the slower or the more time it will take for that container to dry out. The smaller the mass amount of soil, the quicker it's going to dry out. So keep that in mind as well. A good all balanced compost or potting soil will work. It would also be advised to find something that may contain a slow-release fertilizer, or you can add fertilizer at the time of planting and do both to help feed the crop. There are many guidelines on the Internet that will guide you in what size container is required for what crop. Additionally, placement of the container is important. For if you're trying to grow greens, you do not need necessarily full sun, but tomatoes do require full sun. And some type of supporting mechanism, whether a stake, pole, cage, or trellis of some sort. Growing in containers is very versatile and gives you the flexibility that sometimes the ground does not provide you. So if you've not gardened yet this year or you're wanting to expand, containers is the best option. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants, to multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Pharmaceuticals essential oils are high grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit dharmaceuticals.com. New, new natural healing ointment, USDA certified organic. Get your tube at nunuhealing.com. Your plants are greener when using Hydrobox, revolutionary in plant watering. Hydrobox catches the water from water and delivers it straight to the roots to release when plants need it. You will water three times less often and plants grow faster. Hydrobox is an innovative little gel-filled pouch that goes in the bottom of a pot, container, or grow bag. Multiple sizes based on need. Easy to install and use. For indoor and outdoor use, saves time and money, lasts up to three years. Look for it at homedepot.com or visit gohydrobox.com. The new way to support your tomatoes, wrap it and snap it, tomatosnaps.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Rowmaker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe, Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. So the temperatures are warming up finally here, and that means one thing. It's time to get your landscape and your uh, property back in check. And if you don't want to do this, or you need assistance doing it, or you need the materials to do this, or you need the knowledge, there's only one place in Milwaukee that has all of that and a whole lot more. You can go to Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. They're at 4930 West Loomis Road, just south of Layton. You can go to bluemills.com or call 414-282-4220. They have the staff. They have the equipment. They know what will work, but they will listen to the customer, and they'll listen to you, and they'll give your give their advice to you, but they'll follow your plan. That's Blue Mills at bluemills.com. <laughs> Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host Joey and Holly Baird. Holly, let's go to the IV Organics 3 in 1 Plant Guard Hotline and bring our guests for the week. Kelly Coyne and Eric uh, Knudsen live in the heart of Los Angeles. 
in a little bungalow set on one one quarter or one twelfth acre lot where almost all of their land is devoted to growing edible or otherwise useful plants and trees. Their obsession includes bees, bikes, beer, chickens, healthy cities, healing herbs, simple living, and good food. In short, everything, do it yourself. They are the authors of The Urban Homestead, Your Guide to Self-Sufficient Living in the Heart of the City, and Making It, Radical Home Act for a Post-Consumer World. And we have Eric on the line. Welcome to the program, Eric. Great to be here, Holly. How are you? Well, we thank you for taking time and, uh, out of your day to join us and enlighten Holly, myself, and all of our listeners about some things that we don't typically cover on the program here, uh, but you're the expert, so we brought you in to, to educate us. All right, sounds good. Now, many people don't want to have a compost bin or compost area, heap, whatever you want to call it, because they don't have enough space. They don't like the thought of it, but there is worm composting. Why would you recommend worm composting for people who don't want to commit to a compost heap? And briefly, what is worm composting? Yeah, so uh, worm composting, of course, is using worms to uh, to basically eat apart your, your vegetable scraps and turn it into what is really a, a high-quality nutrient for plants. And as you, as you alluded to, you know, it's, it's actually really difficult to maintain a, a proper compost pile, especially if you live in a small house like we do and have a small yard. You know, to do a compost pile right, you really need like a cubic yard of material to start with, I think. I mean, there's, there's differing opinions on this, but I think it's good to start with a big cubic yard. And that can be difficult, again, if you have a small piece of land. I, You know, I've done it. It's, it's, I've had to accumulate materials from outside our yard, which I'd kind of prefer not to do. The nice thing about worms is that you can have just a small bin, even if you're in an apartment. Uh, you can have a bin indoors, and, you know, that just consists of, of worms and bedding material. And you could just slowly add small amounts of material from your kitchen as you as you use it. You don't have to like accumulate this huge amount of material all at once. So it's a great way to do composting on a on a really small scale with that kind of like trickle of material that typically comes out of a kitchen. And then and the inner and correct me if I'm wrong, worms won't overpopulate their living uh, uh, environment, correct? Once they get to a certain level they'll stop reproducing but still create that worm castings in the worm farm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a kind of plug-and-play thing. You do have to, to monitor the worms and periodically remove the material and, and then, you know, keep them fed. I think one of the mistakes also that, that people make is not having enough bedding material in there. Um, you don't want it to heat up like a, a large compost pile will. So you need to have a lot of bedding. We use, like... Uh, the kind of like bedding material that you get for hamsters, that kind of thing, which you can also use shredded uh, newspaper, not shredded magazines, but shredded newspaper. Uh, and there's a few things generally that we avoid adding to a warm bin, like onions, citrus oils, meat, and salt. But other than that, it's, it's pretty simple to, to maintain. Now, let's talk about lawns for a minute. You don't care for lawns, and neither do we, because uh, from what I understand, uh, and I've not tried it, grass doesn't we, grass doesn't work too well with humans. Oh, why do you choose uh, not to like lawns, and oh, what? why do they not make sense to you? Yeah, there's a, there's a number of reasons. And, uh, of course, we're in Los Angeles, and I think some of your listeners are, are in the Riverside area, too. So we're in a, a dry Mediterranean climate here. And it's not in a climate that's really appropriate for lawns. It takes a lot of water, not to mention mowing the lawn. Uh, but even if you're not in a, if you, if you're, even if you're in a place that, that has more rain than we do, um, lawns don't attract uh, native insects and pollinators that are so important to, to our, our landscape. But also, I know a lot of your listeners are interested in vegetable gardening, so I always think it's good to have a large portion of whatever bit of land that you're in charge of that is dedicated to attracting native insects. Uh, it's better for your vegetable gardening. It keeps the, the kind of the, the insect world in, in a balance. Uh, and um, lawns don't do that. Lawns are like a desert. And um, I mean, and, and also it's like 
it's just kind of silly because people have these huge lawns that they don't ever use. It's just like you look at it. What's the point of that? You know, there was a UCLA study a few years ago that resulted in a really great book called Life at Home in the 21st Century. And it was um, it was done by a bunch of, I think they were anthropologists at UCLA, that set up cameras in 30 different homes here in Southern California. And they found that half of the people never actually went into their yard. And the remaining half spent maybe a few minutes a week. So what's the point of having this like expanse of green that you have to water, that you have to mow, that becomes this, that just doesn't add to any sort of benefit either to the, the insects that, that are so important in our environment or to just whatever, you know, it just, it, there's just no point to these lawns, you know, it's not like you're going to go out and play soccer on them, right? <laughs> right, no, I, I totally agree, it doesn't, you can't eat the grass, so, and some people don't want you walking on their pristine lawns, so that's, I guess exactly. it's it's whatever. Now, you keep your home clean using cleaning products, really simple and basic. What do you mainly use to clean your home with? The three main things are vinegar, baking soda, and Castile soap. Those are the main things that we use. But also uh, washing soda, which is a great degreaser, hydrogen peroxide, rubbing alcohol, uh, salt, lemons, essential oils. Those, that's kind of the the basket of things that we use. We like to use things that are non-toxic, that are inexpensive. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff on the Internet about mixing these things, but we don't even do that. We just keep it simple. So for the for most things, it's vinegar, actually, uh, a distilled white vinegar, uh, and baking soda, and, as I said, Castile soap. Those are the main things that we use. We actually have a long, uh, uh, Kelly, my uh, wife and co-author, wrote a, a nice long guide on our website uh, at rootsimple.com about um, all, the, all, the, all of these uh, the products that I just mentioned and, and how to use them. Well, and that's the thing. There are certain chemicals that you can purchase at the store that you have to, supposed to, if you read the instructions, wear gloves, wear a respirator, and you're cleaning your home with that. And uh, we should put that together and go, that's probably not the best way to clean a place in which we're going to prepare food or uh, et cetera uh, in our home. Yeah, I mean, our consumer culture wants to sell us stuff. And uh, we've become, as Thoreau would say, tools of our tools. Uh, and we serve these chemicals rather than them serving us. Uh, and, you know, when we went down this road of, of testing all of these very simple products, we found that they work just as well. And, of course, they're non-toxic. If you have kids in the house or pets in the house, you don't have to worry about them. Most of these things, the exception of rubbing alcohol, of course, but most of these things are uh, non-toxic products. Uh, and there's just way too many bad chemicals in our households. I mean, you know, the, the fact is that after World War II, uh, wartime chemicals were repurposed for cleaning and sold to us, and we don't need these things in our houses. You can do it all with just vinegar, baking soda, and Castile soap. Well, let's talk about uh, economists here. You consider yourself a radical home economist. What? What? How do you categorize that, or why do you put yourself in that uh, that category? <laughs> well. Um, I think it's a radical because I, I mean I, I think it's important to to say and, and uh, uh, we we always do that that we can't change this world through individual action. So while I love vinegar baking soda and Castile soap, um, that's not enough. Uh, I think we all have to work together uh, in terms of collective action for systemic change. And I know that sounds very, like, highfalutin and, and inachievable, but it could be something as simple as throwing a neighborhood party and getting neighbors together. That's something we do in our neighborhood here that a, a neighbor of ours started. There's a monthly happy hour, and I can't tell you how much that is done for neighborhood cohesion. It's a great thing to do. Everyone should do that, even if just one other neighbor shows up and you hang out. That can be the start of, of a lot of really important 
change in your neighborhood. I mean, you can you can share gardening ideas, you can talk about street safety, all kinds of things. And of course, you can get you know you can do more than that too. You can go to community meetings. You can get, get be engaged at the local level to to change things. For many years, I worked on the bike coalition to make it safer for people to ride bikes in LA or even just to walk in LA. Uh, so there's all kinds of things that you can do to uh, work with your neighbors to make your city and your country a better place. So that's the radical and the radical home act. That's that's awesome. Now, you like to keep things simple and low-tech when it comes to living as urban homesteaders. I know that there's a lot of different things that people can do or purchase to to be urban homesteaders, but you definitely like to keep it simple. Um, why do you do so? Yeah, I always find it, I mean, again, it, it's this, this consumer capitalist culture that wants to sell us the idea of being simple, which is so so counterproductive. Um, I really like what William Morris, the great artist and designer, said. He said, have nothing in your house that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. So just simply um, thinking about what comes into our houses, um, making sure that it is, as Morris said, either useful or beautiful. If it isn't, don't, don't bring it in. Um, I like um, small houses, small apartments with careful attention to detail, uh, to, to considering what's in there, and to not falling prey to like this constant consumer drive. Uh, so many things that we can do, uh, we can do without paying someone. You know, we can take a walk, we can walk in nature, uh, we can garden. Uh, we can garden with native plants, with vegetables. So many things that we can do to get in touch with nature, to get in touch with each other, that do not involve this this kind of consumer culture relationship. Uh, so that's kind of my uh, my two cents on that. Uh, makes a lot of sense, Eric. Uh, where can we find more about you and the book? So you can find us uh, on the interwebs at rootsimple.com. And we also have a podcast, which is in the iTunes store, which is unsurprisingly called the Root Simple Podcast. So those are the two places to find us. Well, Eric, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to share with Holly, myself, and all of our listeners how to be a little more simpler uh, in living our lives. Well, thank you, Joey and Holly. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, when we come back, don't go anywhere. It's all about your garden questions and our garden answers. You can always send us an email at twvgshow at gmail.com. You can always visit the website anytime at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food, a fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system, solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems Raised Garden Bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway, any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG2019 and get $295 off listed price of $1,695 plus free shipping, a $250 value at EcoGardenSystems.com. Spending time scrubbing pesky dirt off your hands after gardening? Use Workman's Friend Superior Skin Cream with added barrier protection, creating a protective layer on your skin surface, allowing for easy cleanup, all while moisturizing and healing your skin. Non-greasy, fragrant-free, and fast absorbing. Apply first, get to work, wipe clean. This friend has you covered for whatever you're getting into. Visit workmansfriendbrand.com. World 
CoolestRainGauge.com. Need I say more? Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Helpful for weeding. ProPlugger.com. Soil Diva is the best kept secret in the gardening world. Soil Diva is an all-natural, liquid, biological soil and plant stimulant product. Check it out at SoilDiva.net. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. BobX can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit BobX.com. B O B B. BEX.COM. Big Fats has a variety of unique and delicious hot sauces available at mild, medium, and hot. A small company looking to change the world with all natural hot sauces made from quality ingredients and a whole lot of love. BigFatsHotSauce.com. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff catering a bill open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414-278-7878, and online at beansandbarley.com. Do you want fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood? Check out Tree Ripe Citrus Company. Find out where to pick up quality produce at tree-ripe.com. They have beautiful tasty peaches and juicy sweet blueberries. If you're tired of the non-taste peaches and the bad blueberries from your local grocer, Tree Ripe has what you need. They come right to a stop in your neighborhood, fresh off the truck, right from the source. To find locations and schedules, visit tree-ripe.com. They're in Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, and right here in Wisconsin. Tree-Ripe.com is your go-to place for the freshest produce around. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts Joey and Holly Baird. Ivy Organic 301 Plant Garden naturally protects plants against damage and sunburn, insects and rodents, protect new- newly installed plants and trees, shields prune and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic. For more information, you can visit ivyorganics.com. You can send us an email through the Ivy Organics 301 Plant email inbox. That email address is twvgshow at gmail.com 
Or you can send us a text on the Instant Access IV Organic 31 Plant Garden Access Text Hotline. Send your questions via text to us at 414-368-9311. Again, that number is 414-368-9311. we got a couple questions yes, here. Yes, came in through social media, through uh, emails, through the website. Robert, uh, wants, Robert to wants to know. I'm in the Wisconsin area. Uh, what can I plant after I harvest my garlic in a couple of weeks? What would you can plant tomatoes, potatoes, cucumbers, peas, turnips, and rutabagas. These are all ideal crops. Now, if we yeah, now tomatoes, that's if you have the extra plant starts, and, and we do have the plant starts. Uh, but pota- definitely, pot- uh, and potatoes too, if you see potatoes. But cucumbers, peas, turnips, rutabagas are all really good options. Uh, in the upper Midwest, we want to hold off on those peas, turnips, and rutabagas to about the early portions of August, so the days will get start. You know, by the time they get mature. Uh, we find that the uh, rutabaga and turnips do better when we plant uh, that area. My tomatoes look normal, but then they turn black on the bottom. What's wrong with them? Well, that is called blossom in rot. Uh, we talked about in the beginning of the uh, first segment today. Uh, this is blossom in rot due to the fact there is not enough water in the soil in order for the calcium to be uptaken by the plant in order to produce the fruit and develop the fruit correctly. Uh, is not necessarily a calcium deficiency, but just not the enough calcium in which can be picked up for the plant. Uh, what we can do in order to fix this is water on a regular basis. You don't necessarily have to add calcium to the soil uh, in order to get the amount in that soil, but uh, water consistency, and it will fix the next generation of tomatoes on that crop, uh, on that plant. It won't fix the ones that are currently black on the bottom right now. Um, you, people will add, choose to add Epsom salt. That is not nec- that does not work. No, Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. Um, I don't know where this myth came from, but it's it could take calcium away from your soil if you use too much of it. But it's not terrible for your soil. You just want to use it moderately. It'll help make your plants look more green and uh, colorful, bright, vibrant, bigger blooms as bigger well. Bigger blooms as well. Uh, next question, are shrews good or bad for the garden? Number one, what so is a shrew? A shrew is, is a rodent, basically. It's like a little, it's not a mole or a vole. It's like, it's If you bed. looked at it, you would think it was like a, a miniature yeah, mole or vole. they're smaller. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they're like, probably like the mice of, like the mice compared to a rat. The shrews are smaller compared to a mole or a vole. Um, but they don't hurt the plants. They just burrow into the garden, they don't burrow into the garden beds. They live under leaves and grass matter, such as like mulch. And they might use existing mole and vole tunnels. So they're fine for the garden. They're not really causing any problems. Typically, if you think something else is causing problems, it's going to be a mole or a vole. So shrews kind of come and use the tunnels that were there, and they do their thing. Uh, they make up a large portion of uh, 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 what the, the typical they shrew like to diet eat, they like is to what? Eat insects. Yeah. And they typically do eat bad insects like beetles. Um, they will eat grasshoppers and butterflies and moth larvae. Um, so... And they will eat different earth. They will eat, eat earthworms, but they're not going to burrow as much. But they kind of they're, they're they beneficial under- to the garden. Yeah, uh, you just want to just kind of be aware of them and uh, know if you're getting a vole, a mole, or or anything else. Question is about boxwood shrubs. I have fifteen to about 15 two to three year old boxwoods that I'm trying to grow into a hedge. Suddenly, the outside of the leaves. Tips have been turning yellow. I'm concerned I might lose them. Is there anything I should do to assure their health? Well, you can feed and water your bushes like normal to help them recover from root rot. Sometimes the root system of a boxwood shrubs, uh, of the shrubs get infected with fungal pathogens like phyrothrum, uh, P-H-Y-T-O-P-H-T-H-O-R-A. When root rot becomes serious, it can manifest as yellowing and curling inward, inward of the leaves, and uh, they can turn upwards as well. Uh, the leaves can curl inward and turn upward, and the plant will look poorly. So if you water and feed them, use an all-balanced fertilizer from Dr. Earth, you will have uh, better results, and you should see the recovery come back from those boxwoods. John asked, my soil is like concrete. I came and get a rototiller to chisel through it. Let's address this question to Ben from Standard Process. He is the farm property supervisor there, and we'll see what he has to advise John and us on the question. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. 
to help identify the best supplements for you. Find your local health care professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. This is Ben Bartlett from the Standard Process Organic Farm. Today, John asked a question about his super hard and concrete-like soil. So hard, in fact, that his rototiller can't even break it apart. And what can he do to improve that? This is an issue that's really close to my heart and my training. Soil that's like concrete can be an issue on a lot of gardens and a lot of farms. It's a relatively easy fix, but it can take a long period of time. The first thing you need to do is add some form of organic material to that soil, whether it's grass clippings, leaves, straw, coffee grounds. There's lots of things you can add. Usually a good compost source really improves the soil structure by improving the biology that's in that soil. What you're trying to get there is more biology that will break apart that soil and keep it aggregated. You also may have a nutrient imbalance in that soil. Usually you can start adding things like calcium in the form of gypsum or lime, depending on your soil pH. That will also help. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, Holly, remind them about the executive sponsor. The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the power planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Tune in next week. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell those who are in your gardening group. That's how people find out about us. We're going to talk about second crops in which you can plant in your garden right now for summer harvest, as well as fall crops, and the importance of bees and how we can begin to help them survive, as well as our guest, Nick Federoff from Nick Federoff on Gardening. Things Green, the man with the beard, will be with us, plus your garden questions. If you this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can do that in a couple of different ways. One, by going to your favorite podcast providing website and searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. You can also go to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, clicking on the radio tab at the top of the page for full length or the highlight tab on the right hand side for segments of all past shows. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You've been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communication Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.